Yeah, yeah, what's up? This is the We So Classic podcast brought to you by WeSoClassic.com. I'm Big Recess, and I'm here with part four of our introspective with the host of the We So Classic podcast, the head of the We So Classic crew, my man D. Dane. What's good, D? What's popping, my brother? What's good, man? Everything's good. You know, all the logistics, you could you could put it there later in the beginning. This is uh, not introspective. This is the real shit, right? It's all good, kid. <laughs> so I, I was fortunate to do the first introspective. It was a cool show. We were shooting the shit from when we first yeah. met. And that's still, we, we still only went 10, 15 years deep, right? We had like I know, a while exactly. to go. <laughs> Yo, um, Lou Hall, I loved his introspective. Yeah, he was given the business, a lot of business going down. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> he was dropping the knowledge on that shit. He was. Yo, Prez got a lot of background knowledge, right? Like, no, he's like no, he's no. the one that I could uh, ask. I asked Prez, what happened? Da, 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 da? And it had to be in the period <laughs> of the 70s, right? <laughs> <laughs> the 60s and the 70s and shit. Yeah. So on uh, each introspective, you know, we just wanted the listeners to get to know us a little bit better. You know what I mean? Uh, y'all three set it off. Right? Y'all started the We So Classic brand. Doubt, found me doubt. on the side of the road. No doubt. He picked you up, scooped you up and shit. <laughs> Dusted me off. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, D, like uh, the same question that you had asked us. Um, and it's it's a powerful question because it's like reminds me of um, what was that movie? Uh, was it Brown Sugar? <laughs> with, Brown Sugar. With the dude uh, that asked, when, when was the first time that you fell in love oh, with hip-hop? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Tate Diggs and shit, Tate no Diggs. doubt. So, <laughs> and it's a real question. So, of course, I want to set it off, D. When was the first time you fell in love with, with, with Shorty Girl? With Shorty Girl, <laughs> yo, that hip-hop, man. Yo, that shit was like... <laughs> Love so for for me it goes back to early eighties, definitely early eighties. Um I think my first this even before hip hop, it started off with just music in general, was um Michael Jackson. Started off with Michael Jackson was the first person I can remember like really loving as far as music wise. That's right. So I used to rock to Michael Jackson all the time and then um just being in New York, you know what I'm saying, in the early eighties and Friday, Saturday nights, fucking I, I just I just discovered Red Alert. Mm. Red Alert and and, and 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 Chuck Chill Out and, and all of them dudes and Molly Mall and Mr. Magic, I discovered them. Yes. So then um like the first time I really, really fell in love, I think it had to be like when I heard like my Adidas for the first time. Ooh. My Adidas. And this is nineteen eighty. It's just like eighty man, it's eighty four, eighty five or something like that, man. So I must have been if it was if it was eighty five, we we ain't fact checking this shit, but if it was eighty five, <laughs> I was either six or seven years old, man. Yeah. And just hearing that shit and like being from Queens and run DMC, they always represented Queens. They always represented Queens. And my first favorite MC was DMC. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Grade, I got the first in New York in State. New York State. You know what I'm saying? Because DMC, he had the glasses. You know what I'm saying? I wear glasses. He had the glasses. And his name was D. Yeah. And his rhymes was, was my name is D in the place to be. Come on, man. Come on, kid. <laughs> you can't get any better than that. <laughs> I can recite that shit and, and feel it, man. So, yeah, it was definitely like run DMC, man. It just had to be my idea this year. All right. So when we were speaking on my introspective, you you fucked my head up. You said. <laughs> it was a. Uh... First, I said, told you the first. Rhyme that I rec- memorized mm. and I didn't even know how I knew it was Lottie Dottie. Lottie Dottie. <laughs> for the listeners, let's let, run that run that story. But how did it work for you with this Lottie Dottie? What happened? With, with Lottie Dottie, man, it was um I don't even know how I knew the words <laughs> because that's classic. <laughs> but I knew the I knew the words to the the one with the curses because I guess I assume I heard the one with the radio version on the radio, oh. but for somehow. Just being around like the older crew. That's what it was. I used to hang around the older crew. My crew was older than me. Mm-hmm. So if I was like seven, they must have been like like twelve and thirteen years old. So they was a little older and shit. So they would listen to they was already a little advanced or whatever. So one of them must have had that Lottie Dottie, man. And then um just bumping it, yo, and I just learned old. I knew that shit from front to back, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being on my grandmother's block. It must like I said, it's early. This must be like eighty eighty four, eighty five and and um and then somebody was playing it, and I was just like, like rhyming and shit. Lottie Dottie, we like the party. We don't cause trouble. We don't, we don't bother nobody. 
<laughs> Yo, you know how to do the beatbox perfect to that too. Oh man, I, I, listen, I ain't gonna toot my own horn. I used to be the beatbox. I used to beatbox. I used to do my shit. Yeah, Mr. Hollis F. Beatbox yeah. champ. That used to be my shit, man. That's what's up. So, um, yeah, Lottie Daddy was definitely so that was the first song I ever I learned straight through. I knew all the words. And I said I fell in love with Slick Rick. Mm-hmm. Slick Rick was just the fly dude. Slick, well, Slick Rick was the fly dude, and then you had Dougie Fresh because he had the beatbox, uh-huh. and he was just the illest entertainer, man. He was just the illest show. One thing that we always recognize when we first fall in love with hip hop, our first album that we ever caught. Mm-hmm. What's yours? My very first album. See, it's a couple of different layers. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got the first the first bootleg album I, I had. Whoa. You got the first album, I, I, I actual album I got my mother bought. That's and what I want. That's what I want. Give album. me that story. Okay. The first album my mother actually bought for me. For me, it was Christmas 19... I want to say 89. Mm, another summer. <laughs> so I had the Christmas list. So I wrote that. Yeah, all right. I had like a video game. I might have had like whatever, Madden or whatever the video game was out or Zelda or some shit. <laughs> and I asked for um, Heavy D, Big Time. Wow. It's one of my favorite albums to this day. <laughs> and Big Daddy Kane, I think it was, must have been Long Live the Kane. Mm. I believe it was the one where ain't no half stepping on it. Yeah, it sounds like eighty eight. Yeah. yeah, so that's my my my, my two first albums I ever asked for, and I had it on my own Cass- albums, cassettes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. The cassettes, you know? cassettes, and I killed them shit. That heavy, yo, that heavy D big time. That shit is a classic album, yo. That shit is still classic, man. Well, you was you were surprised when he passed, right? I was. Oh I was... man, that shit was out the blue, man. Like what the fuck, cause. You didn't even know he was sick. I, I know we hadn't seen him in a while. I guess he was doing his, like, you know, shit on the low or whatever and just moving, like, doing behind-the-scenes shit. And then somebody told me, I'm like, yo, what? honestly, when most when most of these people die, it just shocks me. It, it always shocks me, no matter what. Even if, even Punt, everybody, it just always shocks yeah, me. Yeah, Fife, know? we knew Fife was, you know, he had... That shit shocked the shit out uh, of me, too. Completely shocked me, though. Yeah, everybody on my Christmas list and back in 88, they're still alive. No, Yo, oh, okay, yeah, okay. It was, uh, <laughs> you Public at? Enemy. Okay. Yeah, Biz Marquee and no Slick doubt. Rick. Okay. But, but, you had, hold on, hold on. They bought you Slick Rick's no, tape? No, 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 no. It, it, I, 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 I'm not going to lie. It was the 12 inch of okay. It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Okay. That's okay. my first okay. album. No doubt. So, D, when you start, how did you know when you started going past middle school, you know, when you start getting your Walkman? Oh. headphones and you realize that hip hop music was like the everyday man oh man that... what was the backdrop oh my god hold on, I'm trying to think yo you saying like when I just when I realized that hip hop was just like just part of your everyday when I put on my headphones and my, I, I'm doing it because I got a hip hop album in there or I got a cassette a single I'm listening to the radio and you know what type of music I'm listening to of course, of course. it was so fucking early man like really it was so fucking early, like even, like around that time, like it must have been around like the eighty eight or whatever, and like having that. I think because you know what it is. I think when she got me the cassette, I think she did me. Give, I think I, I think I got a Walkman too. I think I got a Walkman too. So like that was it. So you talking my eighty eight? I'm like nine, like nine years old, <laughs> nine ten years old, and I was just you couldn't tell me shit, yo. <laughs> like <laughs> when it came, like you couldn't tell me I wasn't gonna do that shit. You could not tell me that I wasn't gonna do something in hip hop. Like back in '89, I I knew, I felt that shit. So when you when you were mentioned about your next door neighbor, mm-hmm. DJ yeah, Rob, D- DJ Rob, <laughs> tell me about when you first thought, oh man, I gotta get me, I gotta get me equipment, I gotta go, man. Oh man, like I said, DJ Rob, he like the, the 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 neighborhood DJ next door, and um, like he was the man. I just saw him, like he was the man, yo. And then um, he just everybody used to always come to the block just to cop his tapes, yo. Because we had, because my block, my block was like you had you had the drug dealers on one side. Yes. Everybody was cool. Everybody was cool, but drug dealers on one side. Then you had my family on the other side. Then you had you know the other kids and everybody, everybody was cool. Everybody hung out together. Mm-hmm. So the drug dealer crew, they had their own people. They people used to come through and whatever they they did, they did whatever they did. But Rob was on a whole different level though. He used to hang with them. They were all his friends. Yeah, but. He, you could tell he was doing something different. Mm. You could tell he wasn't selling drugs. He wasn't. He was doing some different mm-hmm. shit. And plus, he had his he had his fucking his techniques, his turntables and shit in the in the front porch. And he had the speakers oh, out the window. Okay, so every porch was the party. Man. 
Come on, man. I'm like, this dude is the man. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So this is like 90. And then, like I said, then I went over, I went over to go talk to him. I was like, yo, Rob, da 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 da. He was like, listen, man, if you want to be a DJ, man, you either want to be, you either want to be a DJ or you want a brand new car. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Cause he was like, that's, that's how much money you're going to put into this. And, um, I said, like around that time, I was just asking my mother for like, I don't know, because I knew it was really, I mean, we, we had a big family. It was like me and my, my mother and my, my grandmother and uncles and stuff. But I wasn't trying to ask her for nothing crazy, though. Yeah. And I wasn't going to ask her for no $1,000 turntables and all that shit. I don't, I don't, I don't know if she would have got it. Then again, I was always in trouble all the time, too. Cause I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, I stayed on punishment, man. yo. <laughs> I, I, was a good, I was a good kid up to like that point. So remember, I told you, I did ask, right? <laughs> no doubt. I stayed on punishment, man. So I was probably just, I was content with just the video games and all that shit. So when you was rounding <laughs> out the end of high school and you know it was time mm. to go to college, right? Yeah, man. Tell me no about the, your thought process and yo, what I want to do? Engineering. It's gonna be something in music. Of course. Well, that's a whole another thing. So we um we um well first of all when I I went to August Martin, August Martin High School that's and right. shit. And then I went there um because when I was in junior high I went to one ninety two. So junior high, they um I remember they, they was passing this I remember this shit. They was passing this paper around was like talking about occupations all right. that people wanted to do. So it had like all these different jobs on there and then the the job that had to get the most money was an airline pilot, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that because they make the most money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew I didn't want to go to Andrew Jackson. That was my zone school. I didn't want to go to Andrew Jackson High School. Did not want to go for shit. Oh, yeah, and that's right because August Martin is August Martin is a little further down, away. Yeah. yeah, I did not want to go to Andrew Jackson. So I was looking at. I wanted. I was like, shit. I want to do. You know. I'm going to be a pilot. <laughs> so it's, it had two choices. I had, it was August Martin had the program and aviation high school had the program. Mm. So my uncle, um, my uncle Greg, he's still like, to this day, he's still like my mentor and everything. I asked him for every, he does everything for me, but, wow. but he, um, he, you know, he sat down with me, you know, went through my application, high school, whatever, filled out stuff. So he was like, all right, listen, if you go to aviation school, you're just going to, that's all you're going to do, you know? As opposed to if you go to August Martin, you can always change your mind. Maybe if you want to do something different in the future, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I was like, right, you know what? I do the August Martin thing. And that's what I end up doing. I end up, I did the AV, I had the aviation class like ninth and 10th grade. We, it was just boring. It's the most boring shit in the world, yo. It, the most boring You know, shit this is world. not, this is not it. This is not. The most boring shit in the world. So, and then I end up switching my major to communications. Mm. And then, um, so then I go around this time and then I'm, then I'm starting to like, you know what? I want to get into, I, I, I was always into the music nonstop, especially throughout the 90s. So this is like 95-ish, 94, 95-ish, when I'm getting ready to become like a junior. So then I start looking into um. This is when doing, the process starts. Like in the, This is when the process you know, starts, yeah, off yeah. Off the bat, everybody knows in junior high school, okay, what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, man. Right, right. Well, I'm saying a junior in high school, a, a junior in high school. So now I'm like, I want to. I'm like shit. I'm on a. I'm not seeing all these different programs, all these different advertisements <laughs> for like IAR. Remember IAR? Yes, definitely. It's audio research. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, I can do the engineering and the in the production shit. I was like, oh shit. So that so I, I go that path. So then I have a whole list of um all the schools that actually offer the program. Because uh-huh. oh, every school didn't offer like a like a production program or musical program. So it was IAR. It was a school in um, Connecticut, New Haven. Damn, yo, chill, homie. Yeah, and it was Queensboro. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, I'm sorry, Queensboro and NYU, NYU also. Ooh. So my uncle, he took me up to. He actually took me up to New Haven. Him and his wife, they took me up to New Haven what? to go look at the school. Yeah, he, he did everything for me, man. Shout out to no, uncle. No doubt. So he, he took me up there and you know checked the school. I was like, okay, this is cool. So then I knew the IAR was kind of an institute. So I kind of wanted to get to get a degree instead of doing the institute route. That's right. So and then so it was basically between NYU and Queensboro. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So how that sound? <laughs> NY New York <laughs> New York University and Queensboro Community College yeah. and shit. So this is my two. This is in my head. This is my two choices. I probably didn't have the grades for NYU anyway. So 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 this is the setup for this shit, right? Let's go. So NYU. So I'm like NYU <laughs> Queensboro. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so NYU was like, obviously, I want to go to NYU. I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be amazing. Wow. So they, I get the application uh-huh. right for NYU. It's this whole application, you got to fill the whole thing. This is my senior year of high school, probably the beginning of senior year of high school. I'm already starting to like, I'm, I don't want to do any more work really. Yo. I'm ready to get the fuck out this school, man. Yeah. They was like, you got to write. I think I had to write two separate essays, yo. What the fuck? Like 500 words a piece of some shit. I said, man, I ain't writing no fucking essay, yo. <laughs> come on, man. I'm not writing no essay, B. Two essays? Come on, man. I'm not doing that, yo. So then I look at Queensboro. There we go. My cousin, my cousin is going to Queensboro. My cousin John. At least five people from my senior, from my senior class is going to Queensboro. I'm like, everybody I know is going to Queensboro. Queensboro was the 13th grade straight yeah, up. Yeah. Straight up 13th grade. I definitely grade. agree. I was in 13th Straight grade up 13th grade. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, they still had the program, though. They still had the program yeah. or whatever. So I ended up going to Queensboro. I was like, this is what I want to do. I said, this is it. This is it. This is it. Production, engineering, hip. This is it. This is what I want to do, man. <laughs> so when you entered the program, I know you you had to start getting the on-hand knowledge and stuff like that. Right, and it was much right. easier to to research and because it's something that you are interested <laughs> off the bat, right? Yo, but I fucked up, kid. Come Let me on, tell you, man. Come on, man. First semester of college, right? I went to the guidance counselor and then they was, you know, they gave you a list of suggested classes that you take. Yeah. So they had me taking sixteen credits my first semester. <laughs> sixteen credits B. That's a full that's a full That's a schedule. full shit. Sixteen credits and the <laughs> I know in retrospect, I'm listening, this just sounds crazy, but this is what I was about, man. This, the music, the, the actual studio, studio class, the studio, I guess, whatever, studio one on one, whatever it is. Uh-huh. That shit, the only time I could take it was Monday, was Monday night at like eight o'clock. It's from like eight to 10. That's when wrestling comes on, yo. No, you did not, D. That's when <laughs> wrestling comes on, <laughs> Everybody that know me know I'm like fucking. I've been a wrestling head since since fucking eighty eighty six. Yes. That's like my second love, yo. Hip hop and wrestling. You have your priorities in order. Dude. So you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, yo, I was I wasn't into the class, yo. I was not. I wasn't into it. Wow. First of all, it's eight, it's eight o'clock at night, and my the the last class I had before that ended at like five, either four or five. So I had a three hour break. I couldn't go home. I had to stay in the fucking school. Shit. Sure. I could have because I had to take the body to take two buses to get over there, maybe three buses to get over there. So I had to stay in the school and everybody else was gone. Everybody was gone. All my friends left. They was finished for the day. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was I just wasn't into it. yo. I just wasn't into it, man. I was just like, oh, that shit was the most boring. I was tired. I'm missing wrestling. And um, I'm, pfft, I was just like, what the fuck? Well, yo? Then, then, then at that case, and that, at that time, you was probably thinking, what's the next move? What's the next yeah, move? Yeah, I was just like, what the? Oh, see, before that, right? Before, before, even before I got the, before I got the college and shit, right? Oh man, this is like, I don't have many regrets in life, but I, <laughs> I wish I would have went the, a different way because I, I know for a fact, I, I believe in my abilities. I know for a fact things would have went different for me. So it was my senior year of high school, right? So they was they, they had this um. They was they had this thing about an internship. Somebody like one of the goddess counselors it was in this, um this fly about an internship. Everybody who wants to apply, it's in Manhattan. It's for a record label. Um, it was called A and M Records on 50th Street, Worldwide Plaza and shit. And this is your senior year of high school. Senior year of high school, yeah, yeah, senior year of high school. So they was like, oh, this is and this is gonna be a, a, a internship for the summer. That's summer leading into you know leading into college or whatever. So uh, I remember going, getting down. I got dressed. I got the you know the shirt and tie or whatever. So this is for uh, like a um, internship for like an A and R or whatever. Whoa. So in me, that's is what I do. That's is what the fuck I do, yo. I'm like, yo, this is I got this shit in the smash. Nice. <laughs> so I went into the. Inter- I remember going into the interview and seeing like 50 kids from my school there. So I'm just like, oh, oh what shit. the f- fuck is going on, yo? I'm like, no doubt is what it is, man. I went in. Bust out the interview, bust it out. They only call five people for a second interview. I was one of the five. Oh, I was one of the five, yo. So in my head, I'm like, yo, this is done. Like, I, I'm like, just, I'm super confident. I'm like, this is it. This is a rap kid. I got the, and I, and in my, my, in my abilities, I believe as far as back during that time, like, I would have started out as an intern, 
oh, I'm, even before that, Puffy was like my Puffy was my like inspiration for many many years from the beginning. A lot of young men, a lot of young men. Stuff, yeah, man. man. So I was like, this is it. I said, I'm, I'm gonna go that route. I'm gonna start as an intern and I'm gonna move up. I'm gonna move up to whatever A and R heading and all. I'm gonna move up and then whatever. I move to another label. I said, I, I'm good. So <laughs> I had took the placement test for Queensboro. I had to take an English test and a math test. Mm-hmm. I passed the English part, but I failed the math part. Oh. So they they was like, okay, now this is your you have you have two options. You can start, you know, you can start your your freshman year of college, but you got to take remedial math, or you could take your know, remedial math in the summertime instead. You could take it in the summertime, and then um, so by the time start the semester regular, starts, you already got it. you regular. But now it was one or the other. I was like, oh, if I do the math, the class in the summertime, I can't do the internship. So I had to make a choice. So I didn't ask anybody. I didn't ask my mother. I didn't ask anybody. It was, I made the choice myself. I said, you know what? I'm thinking like, oh, you know, everybody want me to go to college. Everybody want me to do the college thing. So I'm, I just called the people. I was like, nah, no, thank you. I'm, I'm not going to come in for the second interview or whatever. I'm going to, you know, I have, you know, school and shit. Yeah. Are you so I just serious, did it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just went to. Yeah, that shit still hurt. Dan saying that shit just hurt just now, <laughs> you know. Yo, because um, it was the summertime. That shit hurt. So I had know. to take the summer class, and and then that was it. That internship was done. It was done. That shit was done. So, yo. so if you did not take the remedial course during the summer, you weren't going to be able to start your first semester. I would have been able to start it. I would have took remedial math. I just, you know, I'm, I I don't want to disappoint my mother. And oh, I'm a remedial math and all this. You know what I'm saying? Something I would take it now. And I could start off on a strong foot, you know, start off a regular math. And then fucking not, I can say funny case, funny scenario, not even really funny, but I, I took the regular math and I failed that shit in my first semester anyway. Oh, <laughs> my God. Math, you know? I fucking failed Yo, the math. Do you, you know? think that was a sign? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it you think was, that was man. like somebody tell yo, that's the Lord Could telling you, like, yo, next, yeah, next time, but that door's <laughs> a knocking. But that door never came a knocking, not, <laughs> not that. <laughs> no, but you know what? Like I said, I don't really regret much things because that just led to a whole bunch of, that led, just me doing that led to a whole bunch of like, um, I don't even, I can't think of the word. This whole, this led to a whole bunch of Aff- me meeting different people and a whole bunch of effects. Like I, so, I, I would have never met y'all. Yeah, let's put it this way. So, so I would have never so, met so y'all. That's, that's where we start popping off. So that's what it so is. Still, I would, <laughs> you know, things didn't work out that way. So now you got to find another way to make it happen. Oh, so yeah, you're going that. to school and, uh, and, and tell, tell me what, what happened between school <laughs> And then you start in your own business ventures. <laughs> so at that time, we um, so we doing a, you know, we met a lot of met a lot of people in in, in Queensboro, and so I met my my man Junior, my man Jay. Um, Keith was up in there too, I believe. Keith with the Queensboro, right? Yes. Yeah, Keith was in there, and I met a, all of us. We all we all was doing the same program, and then um. And then, like, so me and me and Junior, that's how I met Charles. And then me and Junior and Keith, that's how I met you. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, went to the, I told you this story before. It, like It goes crazy, yeah. You know, so I used to rhyme. Well, I, I, I thought I could rhyme until I heard y'all. <laughs> and I said, nah, I ain't no fucking MC. Yo. <laughs> I, can't, I can't fuck with these dudes, man. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the drawing boy. So I was like, you know, I'm going to stick to the production and shit. You know what's funny? Then I... <laughs> And then I heard Keith and Debo's production. And I'm like, God damn, man, oh, I can't do this gosh. shit. <laughs> but it was all good though. But um, yeah. So then me and me and Junior just hooked up, just like just just talking about. I don't, I don't remember how we even started this whole Eclipse Entertainment thing. I don't remember how we even had it as an idea. So Eclipse Entertainment. Now this is your first business venture coming out first of business yeah, venture. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so you don't know how the idea started, but you know. At what direction you had to take it because of course of of Junior's professional antics. No, <laughs> <laughs> our boy Drink is a trip, man. We always into some shit, man. But we um, yeah, we just started some how we had an idea to throw a party, just throwing parties, and then that came to throw a party. Obviously, the idea was obviously to make money. Obviously, the idea was to make money, get girls. And have fun and party at the same time and shit. So that was the whole plan. <laughs> Once again, D, your priorities are in order. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know what's funny? I wish I had like I wish I would have saved this shit. I made the flyers 
for for the for all for all for the party for the fashion you, you know the same way i do all the shit now for the we so classic i do all the logos and yeah. the, like i said i'm a jack of all trades master of none you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> but i remember making the flyer that shit came out oh, dope. Yeah, that shit came out dope, yo. like we made like i had an actual for the fashion show i made actual flyers and we had to go pick them shits up in brooklyn had them print out 1500 flyers yo. we hand that shit out throughout the city so so we started off with um like i said we had we had a party in queens and then um, that was okay. We made we made a little bit of money. Might have made like three hundred dollars, whatever. Maybe you know. And this party was at. Oh, this um, this is in um, what's that? What's that? This is this is by you. This is by you. What's in fucking Richmond Hill and shit? Over. This is in Richmond Hill. It was a bar off of um Atlantic Avenue, I believe. Mm. It's a bar on, off of Atlantic on Leffitt's Avenue. Boulevard. Some, yeah, I think it might have been left in Atlantic. It was like a little bar. It was a little bar. The one in the cut, I know, right next to the gas station. Okay, all exactly, right. exactly. All right, so and you- yo, it was, it was, it was. So us, it was pretty good, man. Had a decent little turnout and shit. You know what? Yeah, D, D, I, I have to remember. <laughs> I have to remember. I was definitely there. He was definitely there. He was definitely there. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the bar was calling though. <laughs> Free game used to be crazy. Free game was crazy. I was. I don't even think I was even drinking there, man. But we was just. We were just all about just trying to do this business shit. So man. the turnout so, was absolutely. Ridiculous. It was good. Turnout. It was beautiful. No, I, I ain't gonna make it like we was fucking, fucking like puffy and throwing puffy parties. It wasn't ridiculous. It was cool. It was a small it was, bar. It was. It was your. Yeah, it was your first. It was your first. Bar. Yeah, it was cool. The turnout was cool and shit. Now, like I said, now doing the second joint was the was the open mic there we that go. you that you hosted. That turnout was off the hook. That turnout was off the fucking hook, Crazy, yo. Man. That shit. Like I said, I don't remember how we had the eye. Who came up with the idea to open mic? I don't even remember. But um, that was off the fucking chain. So the open now, mic was off. This is on. This is your second party now. No sponsor. Party, no. The- <laughs> and then we just took the money that we made from the first party. We flipped it over into the second party. That's right. And shit. You know what I'm saying flipped it over to the second party. So we, so we rented out that venue. God damn, we did a lot of shit, yo. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I think we needed more money. I think we had to get um. Then that's when Devo came in, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's when Devo came in because we needed a little bit of more money. So that's when Devo became like kind of like a third, a third partner. But I remember, mm, I remember some. A lot of differences going on between us three. I remember something wasn't like 100% cohesive. I do remember that. And something was a little wonky and shit. Um, well, y'all guys are still young trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talking like early 20s. We talking like 21, 22 maybe. We talking early, yo. We young. We kids, man. Yeah, and, and y'all still <laughs> was doing stuff that, that you know, people, a lot of young kids wasn't doing back then. It's not like I, how it is now. Y'all were doing it. The way it was supposed to be do it. done, yeah. Do it, man. So we don't see making the flyers and until open mic, open mic. We discussed that and, and, and probably in your retrospective and shit. You hosted it and you know it was cool. It was cool. It was dope. Um, you are down. Came out downplaying it so much. It, it was. About, <laughs> I guess when it comes down to the business side, you have to look at the turnout and of course the yeah, turnover, yeah, the flip yeah. money. How you how how you gonna right flip? right right right. So we so we actually made a little more money from the open mic. I remember we had a. Somebody had a lockbox and they're just counting the money. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm like, yo, we doing this shit, man. We doing this. So now we're trying to think about what's our third step going to be. I right, what's step number three, yo? <laughs> right, we had we had a party. So we had a party and you know, I'm always thinking, trying to think big and shit, that's, yo. That's so I'm true. like, I we had a party in. We had the, the little house party, the party in a little bar in Queens, Richmond Hill. All right. Then we had the second one in like a slightly bigger bar, and it's still in Queens, but that was closer to me. It was so, not a sweatshop. I'm telling you, it was. Nah, man, that was no. It was no. It was no. That shit is a that shit is a um crown fried chicken now, yo. No. It's a crown fried chicken now. Yep. Brown fried chicken, right on um Hollis and Springfield. Hollis and Springfield, right in the corner, yo. Right in the corner, kid. I'm blown <laughs> away, that. man. I haven't it's been that deep that. In, in a few I years. Know, I can imagine. So then we um so then like I said, my man Junior, he was a um he was the model or whatever. He was the model of the crew and shit. He was a jack of all trades. He's the MC with you yes. and 
model. He might have started dancing by then, you know what I mean? Yes. So he's telling me about all these fashion shows. He's like, yo, I'm doing all these fashion shows, yo. He's like, yo, man, these girls are backstage, yo. They naked backstage. It's off the hook. I'm like, word? But he used to they- tell me these stories. I used to be, word? He's like, so then something hit me. I'm like, yo, we should do a yes, fashion yo. show. Yes, sir. <laughs> should do a fa- Yo, see. I don't really talk about how, I don't really talk about the the particulars of the fashion show too too tough. Yeah, but because th- but this is we, what we're for. So <laughs> the fashion. <laughs> That's what I want to know. We went. I'm gonna tell you, kid. Let's fuck go. it. This this week's so classic introspective, man. Let's go. We we did this shit big yes, sir. for the for the. I'm talking about I'm talking about just the just the auditions, yo. Just the auditions. I remember we this. Out. D, I remember this. I was, <laughs> I, I was never in the doors. I was just watching them going oh, through the door. <laughs> we were running out. We were running out a a a a, a, a office space in in Times Square. We were in an office space. It was on it was on Eighth Avenue uh, Eighth Avenue and Forty Third Street. We were running out a spot. So we had a fucking table. We had all we had. It, it was it was like a dance studio. That's what it was like a dance studio. So we had a table in the middle of the floor, yes. and then we we put, um, we put the fly. We we, we advertised. We advertised. We made flyers. Uh-huh. We put it up by um by Fashion Institute okay. over there on Seventh Avenue. We put the flyers up there. We had some. We put some flyers in the village. We passed them out. Like you know, we need models, 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 models. So we get we was all working at Starbucks then. So it's me, Junior, my boy John, and it was one of might be my cousin John too. So I think it was like four of us. So <laughs> so we already started pre gaming and shit, right? Yeah. Before we get to the thing. So we had like so we had we we had the space rented out for say we had we was like, okay, oh, mild and auditions starting at five PM, whatever it is. Uh-huh. So we get off of work early, we headed out, we start drinking, we drinking a whole bottle. We drinking <laughs> <laughs> We drinking like we drinking um what the fuck was oh, smin or raspberry smin or mm. we're drinking that shit straight because we out of control yo so by the time we get to the thing we we, we twisted and shit yeah. man so but this shit just bugged me out okay so we sitting down we sit down at the table we get there like three nobody's nobody's there so i'm like oh man oh fuck yo 3 30 come maybe one person came I'm like, okay four o'clock pff, it was like must have been like 30 girls yo Showed up. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my god. It's I was like, yeah. about to go. It's down. about to go. I already got the thoughts in my head, the crazy thoughts, the you know, you know how it <laughs> go, yo. I'm like, yeah. So then but we we sit at the table, we have them we we mad professional though, mad. They don't know who we are. We mad professional. We have them walk like walk okay, walk to us, now walk back. I think we I think we had we told them to bring like um like swimwear and stuff. It was crazy. So they modeling the swimwear for it. It was Yo <laughs> It was, Gee, it was off professional chain, yo. man. It was off shade, man. But that was dope. And then said then we um we we chose the girls or whatever. We chose the girls and we chose the guys. So then um What was your criteria then, for the for to be a, a female model? We we wanted to we, we wanted to be diverse. I do remember that. We wanted to be diverse. I remember so the girl you yeah, absolutely girl. right because they had the girls with the ab the big afros and you had the the the, the different um na- nationalities for sure. Nationalities. Yep, and yep. you had different sizes also. You didn't have the yep. straight skinny and you had the athletic. It was all around balance. Yeah, yeah man. We wanted we would that's what we we just wanted to be just you know, represent everybody and shit. Yeah. So then we rented out that space in Times Square, and we had that shit on Memorial Weekend. That was so big. Oh, man. Man. I'm gonna tell you how ill it was. We had the we had the spot in Times Square Memorial Weekend, yeah. and we already and we had the after party already set at, at Planet 28. Twenty Eight at Club Twenty Eight. Come on, Planet man. Twenty Eight, man. That Come after on, party was man. ridiculous. Come uh, on, man. So tell us going into the show, D. <laughs> tell us how, how it's happening. What's going on? You know, the, the feeling is is that when you're young and you're just trying to make it, oh, and you're, so you're hustling, you're doing it so well. You know what I mean, like. The, yeah, I remember being mad stressful though, just so stressful, man. Of course, it's so stressful. But I remember I said something happened with the DJ, and then, and I don't remember who was supposed to be DJing originally. But then we were, I was like, I, I did my, I did my, I did meditate and try to remember, huh? and it was DJ.com. <laughs> from, okay. Or DJ D- um Dak from uh, he used to he's the barber. Or one sixty okay. fifth in Jamaica. Okay. He was supposed to be the original the DJ. Because remember, one sixty fifth in Jamaica. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. I, damn, I how the fuck you remember that? Because yeah, I was meditating, and <laughs> I remember and I'm like, yo, because who ended up DJing? 
You. So I was remembering who was the one that's supposed to teach. I was like, who was it? Hey. Somebody did a couple of parties with him. I think I don't know if he was even involved in the in the in the open mic battle party okay. I had. But I remember doc, him because dot com did the first party. Yeah, dot com did the first party. Okay, yeah, at the bar. Yeah, yeah. So the first I, it was him. It was him that was supposed to. Okay, the same dude then. Okay. Then whatever happened it fell through and then we got you and shit. You came through. You you was dope. I remember that shit. You was dope, yo. You was right on point. Yeah, thank you very much. Right on point, kids. Yeah. I, I guess you were doing were you doing the the MC stuff and and DJ? Junior was doing the MC stuff. Okay. Cause, but Junior was modeling too though. Did he model too? Did he? Hold on. Wasn't it was it his sister? Was it Nora? No, it wasn't Nora. Rona? Rona? Was, was, was she modeling? I don't know. I don't even remember. Hold this on. is like it's so on. long ago, B. <laughs> I didn't meditate hard enough. <laughs> so good, man. So y'all, but, y'all really rocked it, man. Rented out the Either stock way, though. The shit, the shit. Where, uh, it's Memorial oh. Day weekend. Memorial weekend. Oh, man. Kid. I remember it so oh, clearly. Man. And it was Fleet Week. And it was Fleet, Fleet Week, week. yo. Come on, man. So we had like, we had, we, we had some of the, sort of the armed services people in there. Yes. And then, it was off the chain. What a turnout. Kid. It was a gorgeous turnout. That was a good turnout. Now, the thing is, we end up comping. We we comped a lot of people, though. I do remember that. Mm-hmm. We comped a lot of people. So we, we then by that time, we had to get, we needed more money. So we had to get my boy John involved and shit. We had to get him involved. Okay. And then um, that was basically all the money that we made. The money that we made just basically just went back to him. Oh, okay. Went back to him and shit. So... That was pretty much the end, yo. Um, that was it. The, it, it, it it's, the fashion show definitely was so nice, man. Yo, to mm-hmm. just even reach that 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 time when you could actually see the progression in your business, and then when you bad. got to the fashion show, your backstage was ridiculous, right? Oh, yeah. backstage was. I don't even. That shit was like a blur, though, man. I remember they was nigga, but it was like a blur. I was just moving so fast and doing so many different things. I was stressed out, and we weren't about. Worrying about all, worrying about the fucking the the dude with the video camera, just worrying about everything, how to pay I him. I remember the camera man situation, yo. <laughs> trying to pay this dude, we end up not even paying him. I never even seen the fucking fashion show. I never seen it again. Never seen it again, yo. You know what? That's funny because that is true. I never. I don't think I've seen it. I don't. It's crazy. Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> but like I said, that that basically just started the whole thing. It was like, I got to do something, man. Like something, got to do something bigger. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and after the fashion show, yo, I mean, what what happened? What happened? What was the next move, we, man? We the next move was just as far as that went. I think that was pretty much the end. We just decided that. It was nothing else. To, I don't know. We, we had no more capital. The capital was going. Yeah, we had no more money. Man. And we was just like... Trying to do know. it without a sponsor, right? It, yeah, that's tough, man. Now, I, I'm thinking I, this might have been around the time when I'm getting ready to graduate. Um, getting ready to graduate from Queensboro yeah. or whatever. So I end up... Um, my last semester, I had to do an internship. We had to do mandatory internships. So oh, okay. this is my second chance oh, now. Oh, there we go. So okay. We had to do an internship at a, at, a, at a recording studio. Okay. So I remember oh, I was so tight. So I, I think they gave us a list, and it, we had one white kid in the class, yo. <laughs> one, one white kid in the class. This mother, you know what studio this motherfucker got, yo? D and D, Daddy's house. <gasps> he got Daddy's Puffy Studio, Bab the Bad Boy Studio, the baby. mecca of what was of what was going on. I was with the so shiny type. suit era, era. I was so of, type. But, movement at that time, the biggest movement. <laughs> but he was all good. He, he was a cool dude and shit. And I, I, I was trying to think. Did he that, deserve like, it, D? I was thinking that the teacher might have, because that was that was like the top. That was the top course, notch one, top. especially during that time. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe the the teacher he you know he might have he might have liked him a little bit. Okay. I don't know. Okay. That was I was thinking at the time. Okay. But I got I got um. I got Unique Studios. Okay. Unique Studios, okay. which is on 47th and Broadway. Unique Studios was dope. Yeah. Unique Studios was dope. I remember going in Unique Studios and like I went into the real the real room. Yo, man. Biggie, Lost Boy, everybody, Rock Kim, Big Daddy Kim, everybody recorded there. They had all the fucking reels. Everything is just on the wall from all the sessions, yo. I was like, I was in heaven. Hip hop history. I was in he- 
hip hop history. Uh. So, but I mean, obviously I was an intern, so I wasn't really getting involved and I was basically doing the menial stuff, the, you know, the getting, uh, getting the coffee and f- filling up the studios or whatever. But then every once in a while they would ask me to, um, assist, assist the engineer in a session. So I remember I went into a session with, um, <laughs> your man, your man from X Clan. The red, the yeah. black, and the green. <laughs> no way. So listen. So I go in the, so I'm in a session with this dude, right? I'm in a session with him. I mean, I was, I was kind of just chilling. I think I might have got like a couple of cables. He said, oh, get me the dude. The engineer was like, get me, get me such and such cables, or whatever. Right. Like, okay, no doubt, no doubt. Go get the cables and shit. Help him set it uh-huh. up. So then, so this is Professor X. Yes. This is Professor X. Right. Everybody that knows the X Clan knows this dude, especially when he was kids, Afrocentric, black power, da da da, the black man is king, and da da da. So we in the, we in, we in the, we in the thing, <laughs> chilling. Professor X, and then see, people can say, oh, this is just a story. This is, I seen the shit with my own eyes, yo. Your man pulls out the blunt, right? Pulls out the blunt, likes the blunt, <sighs> smoking the blunt. I was a little upset because he didn't offer me nothing and shit. He's passing it around the room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't even smoking then, but just about he didn't even offer me nothing. So already in my head, though, I'm like, damn, Professor X smoking a blunt? Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Right. I'm like, wow. Up your head. I'm like, damn, this is kind of crazy. So he goes in the booth. So then he goes in the booth, he's recording whatever he's recording. So me and the engineer is talking. And so I'm like, I'm like, wow, I know he smoked weed. He was like, Pfft. he's like, smoke weed. He said, listen, you know, the, you know, their songs, their, their main songs. He said, I, I engineered them during that time. He said they was in a session. They had white girls in here. They were sniffing coke. They was wilding out. I said, get the fuck, get fuck out of here. That shit blew my mind. That shit hurt my heart, yo. That shit hurt my heart. He was dead serious. He was, he had absolutely no reason to lie to me. No reason whatsoever to lie to me. And I just seen this dude. He was smoking the weed and then he was yelling at some chick. I was like, yo, this shit is crazy, yo. So what, the, the perception that you see of the, the... Yeah. It shit blew my mind, man. But anyway, but that, but that was just yeah, one thing. That's a crazy story, dude. <laughs> yeah. And then I think I ended up doing one other session. I, I can't. I wish I knew who it was. I wish I remember who it was. Uh-huh. It was somebody probably kind of major too. I can't remember. But he was a he was cool because he was talking to me. <sighs> I can't remember who it was. But he was he was like might have been like like a Ed O G or somebody like that. Whoever it was. But he was he was like a prominent hip hop artist. And he was mad cool. Wasn't CL Smooth. But anyway, he was talking to me and, you know, he was talking to me, telling me about the industry and be careful with this, be careful with that. So it was cool. Okay. I learned I learned a lot of things in there. But what happened was um, I was working. So I'm going to school. I'm working. And then I was interning. Mm. So I was like, something got to go. So I ended up quitting my job. <gasps> I quit my job. So... I'm, so I'm like, okay, you know, I got a little bit of money saved. I went through that shit within like three months. I'm broke, yo. I'm still living at home. I'm broke, yo. So, <laughs> so I'm going to school full time, mm-hmm. and now I'm interning, mm-hmm. interning, and then um they offered me. So at the end of the internship, you know, I'm getting ready to graduate. They said, okay, we can offer you a assistant engineer position, right? Mm-hmm. Five fifty an hour, on call. So that means whenever they have a session, I gotta come in. So which means I can't get another job because they can call you at. They say we can call you at one at one o'clock in the morning. You gotta come. We call you at three in the afternoon. You gotta come. Five fifty an hour, yo. I'm like, fuck, man. I'm broke. I ain't got no money, yo. And I already that's why I was working at one of my older jobs. And then they was, you know, I knew I can always go back. I go back there and make. Um, I think I was left. I was making like a uh ten dollars an hour when I left. So I'm like, fuck. And that was a lot of money back then. This is like, look, okay, this is a lot of money back then, man. So I'm like, damn. $10 an hour back then? Yeah, that was, that was good. Yeah, that was yeah. good. So I'm, I'm like, damn, man. I, so I had, to, I had to decline them, man. I said, I can't do it. I, see, I knew it was people, people. And then, you know what it was? One day I came into the studio. One day I left the studio like 1130 at night, right? Uh-huh. And, I, and I saw the dudes there. Like, All right, y'all, peace out, man. I came like the next day. The same dudes were there with the same clothes on. They was like, yo, yeah, there's, yeah, they don't leave. They just stay here. I'm like, I can't do that shit, yeah. man. I can't do that shit, yo. I'm like, I, I, I had a new relationship and everything. Uh-huh. And then it was, I was like, 
I can't do that, yo. I can't, man. So. It, it was too much. I mean, obviously, yeah. you tell off the bat that it's too much. You can't be, you, you're it's, basically living the artist's life at that time. Yeah, man. I don't know. I kind of look back at that time. I guess the people, like they would say, oh, the people that was the hungriest, whatever, that's who. Maybe I wasn't that hungry back then. I wasn't hungry enough to, to just like, just, I don't know, sleep, man. Sleep there. <laughs> sleep there and not eat and shit and, and starve and be hungry and be poor. I just, I couldn't do it, yo. I just couldn't do it, man. I just, I, <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. What, 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 what did you choose to do, D? I just, I end up, end up pff, just going back to regular life, yo. Right. Back to regular life. Regular. Back to the nine to five. Finish school. I got my degree. That's right. That's right. Just, um, just nine to five shit, man. Cause obviously I said I have my degree, but I'm really not gonna, you know, the, the internship stuff is done. The, the studio stuff is done. So um, I just had to go back to regular life, man. Regular nine to five shit, man. Yo, so right, right after, right after you felt like the business wrapped up, when did you think like again, yo? When's the next idea? When's the next thing coming, man? <laughs> that's when I started. That's when I. That's when I bust up. Started. I, I did. I went through a whole so many different phases, yo. It all had to do with music, though. Yeah. That's when I got. I got my turntables back then. I got the turntables, and then I got a um. I got a core keyboard with a with a mini controller on it. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to find something, man. Just trying to find something, yo. I'm like, I right, I'll be a DJ. That shit wasn't working out. That shit, my skills was not up to par. I was like, fuck. Right, I'm gonna be a producer. <laughs> <laughs> that shit wasn't working out. I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> Something's gotta give, yo. Something's gotta give, man. But it was always like that backdrop of like music and like I said, just being with being with the crew, just hanging out with my boys and you know, all of us just hanging out and partying and everything and shit. So. That was pretty much that, man. Oh man! So you, how, you, how long when you thought you was doing this nine to five that you was thinking, okay, now it's, it's it's about time that I start thinking about, you know, doing something back again with this music, man. Getting back into it might have been like about four years ago. Might have been like four years ago. I have I wasn't even thinking about anything, and then um I found a um virtual DJ program on a computer, mm-hmm. so I started just messing around with it. So I made like a little mix here. I made like a little couple of little mixes on a virtual DJ thing. So people was like, yo, that shit is dope. That shit is dope. What, what you what you got? I said, nah, I don't got no turntable. That's a virtual DJ <laughs> shit. So I'm like, okay, no doubt. So then uh, I think I saved up for like two years, yo. Wow. That's when I finally got my techniques, man. Finally got the techniques and shit. So I got all that shit. I got my techniques, my Serato. I got all that shit all at the same time, yo. All wow. at the same time. So then I got all of that. Then I started getting into, you know what I'm saying, doing the mixes and shit. And then um and then that's how all of it is. That's how everything just it just it just snowballed like um it just all just snowballed, man. So I started doing the mixes and then I'm and then I, I'm a person where I like to do stuff myself. I don't I don't like to depend on other people to do it, to do stuff. So I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to figure out how to do it myself. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted a website. Always like kind of people. Oh, I, don't know, I gotta get somebody. I gotta pay somebody first of all to do a website for me. Then I, it's up to them to. I said I'm gonna do that shit myself. So I started off with like like blog sites and whatever, and all, it all just snowball. To come up with different names, and me and me and Lou Hall, then we got together and shit. It's so funny. I didn't even know Lou rhymed. It's, it's, and he's, and this is your cousin. I didn't even yeah. I didn't know he rhymed. So like. I mean, three years ago, I had no idea. And then he played me. Might have been two years ago. Then he played me some shit. I was like, "Yo, what the fuck, this, nigga?" This whole like, time you ain't tell me nothing. <laughs> and you nice, yo. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck, man?" So then, um, so then, so then we started. Um, I came up with some name, grow, uh, like growing and fly generation. So a lot of my early mixes say growing and fly generation on it and shit. So it was growing and fly generation started. So I was like, "Okay, that's gonna be the name of the company, yo." You know, say so we represent growing and fly generation and shit. So then we um I'm listening to <laughs> He can't he can't sue me because he, he <laughs> I'm listening to Ed Lover show on um Sirius XM Backspin. That's right. Okay. So he was like he's like, yeah, he's like, you know what I'm saying? Sirius X he's doing like this thing before a commercial. He was like, Sirius XM Backspin, you know what I'm saying? We we doing it big, yo, we so classic. Oh I was like, we so classic. It's like, yo, what the? And the way he said it, he said, yo, we so classic. I was like, there you go. Hmm. That's, that's, sound, that's sound a little interesting right there. So, yeah, your man, I love him, man. He heard, 
he wasn't doing that, but he's doing nothing with it. I was like, fuck, that's the shit. That's it. <laughs> it's like, that's it, yo. That's what that, it that's is. That's amazing, man. That's, that's it. Amazing. That's it. it. I was like, as soon as I heard it, that's it. <laughs> it's so funny, man. They, they had a, a lot to do. We've always talked about in, in, in hip hop um, how uh, detrimental it was to have a uh, like a video music box, Ralph McDonald. No, no, and no. then you had, uh, you know, you can't lie, you're on TV, right? Ed Lover and Dr. Dre, man. Yes, man. And then with Ed Lover, Ed Lover was from, he's from fucking Murdoch. He's from down, right down the street from my house, B. So I always had a kin, a, 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 a kinship, whatever. So I always felt something. And then he knew, he, uh, it's deep. I don't know him personally, mm-hmm. but it's always some, it was always a connection with Ed Lover, yo. It was always so weird. Like, cause he worked at Andrew Jackson High School, he was security guard. My aunt went yes. there. He was security guard. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He bowls with my uncles. I don't know if he's, a, I, I think he moved now, but he used to bowl up until like a couple of years ago. He, they, they used to bowl. They had a bowl. They was in a bowling league together. So he bowled with my uncles. And then my teacher in high school, my science teacher in high school grew up with him. Wow. And then, and it's always this like thing that I love. It's so weird, man. It did I, yo, you remember the roll call? Of course. I did the roll call. I, I called the, I the roll call. <laughs> I was on it three times, no, yo. No, it was not, dude. That's bad times, D. That's bad fucking times, times, times yo. Fucking times, man. What's up, y'all? No, what you got to no, say? Who's on the line no, without no, at Lisa and no, Jay? I'm sorry. I was on a roll call twice, and I won $97 one other time. So I was on high 97 three times and shit. Yeah, I won. Wow. I won ninety seven dollars. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man. So like I said, just hearing that, then that just started sparking a whole nother fucking thing. So Luho is your cousin. Well, my cousin, no since doubt. Then, uh, since young, he was visiting you in New York. Yeah, right? yeah. He used to always come up. Well, he came up, and then one summer, the I think the time we, we when we really got because you know his father lived in um they live in South Carolina. His father was in the military. They kind of bounced all over the place. But then they stayed. They stayed in South Carolina. Uh-huh. So one summer, I would. This is where we like really bonded because they um they forced me to stay down there for the whole summer. Yo, I was so pissed, kid. I was so. This is ninety five. So this is like right going into my senior year of high school. Uh-huh. So imagine this shit, right? So this is like going into the last day of school. I know my. I live with my grandmother, which is Blue Hall's grandmother as well. Uh-huh. So I know she's going down south for the summer, but. All I know is she's going down south. I ain't heard nothing else. She's going down south. So I already got plans. I mean, they had they had this they had this hoop it up tournament, hoop it up basketball tournament in here. So me and my boys were gonna do it. We nigga, we already had the applications. We had the money. All we had to do was fill the shit out. So we like yo, we gonna hoop it up tournament, yo. We like you know what I'm saying. We got to hang out with these girls and da da da. So last day of school, I come home and shit. And she's like, okay, we. She's like, we're leaving in the morning. I'm looking around like, who, who, who are you talking to? We? Yeah, we. Who's we? We're leaving in the morning. You, you you coming too? I'm like, what do you what do you mean I'm coming to? I had to go to South Carolina for the whole summer, yo. I was like, I was heartbroken. What a man. change I, of plans. You oh, thought you had you, I was you so thought you controlled your own destiny. Yeah, <laughs> man. I'm like 16 and shit. I'm thinking I'm I'm growing, yo. Broke my heart. But I ended up going down there. I stayed with my grandmother and her sister for like about two weeks. They knew I'm, I was miserable. They knew I was miserable. And then um they was like, Oh, you can go over oh you can go over to Lewis's house, which is which is LJ's father. You you go over to his house if you want. I said, Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll go over there with him. And me and Lou, we just rocked out for the whole rest of the summer, y'all. The mm-hmm. whole rest of the summer. So we bonded we bonded like super tight then, man. Mm-hmm. And that's that's when he tried to put me on to this corny ass South music and all that oh, shit. Oh <laughs> dog, you see. It's funny, man, you say that, kid, because every episode, Lou Hall is like a designated, you know, uh, representative of the South music. Now, explain to the people, you don't mean it like that. Back in the days, though, that's how most of the young kids, you know, was 16, 17, you know, early. That's how we saw this. Yeah, we did. We did. We might. I did. I, I did love the West Coast music. I did love West Coast, but that was it. It was either East Coast or West Coast. I couldn't fuck with nothing else, man. That's just the way it was, yo. I just my mind wasn't expanded back then. So like all that early stuff, like Outkast, and I just wasn't into it. I just wasn't into it, man. But did did Lou press the issue? He nah, he, nah, not really. He kind of he kind of started rocking out to to the music I was bringing up there. Mm-hmm. I was bringing down. He started rocking out to that a little bit. So we had a little common ground and shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. But 
obviously going back and looking, I'm saying, okay, like shit was dope. Like obviously, you know, say we did the um the outcast um retrospective and shit. And um yeah, I mean I I missed a lot of stuff. I missed a lot of stuff and shit, you know. So just being one sided, one <laughs> At the time we didn't know that the South did have something to say. Yeah, they did. They really did. They really did. I mean, it's all good though, man. <laughs> so how how did you meet uh your boy Reg Reggie Press? Uh-huh. Man, that was our old job, yo. We met um Mr. Prez, man. That was that was well my current job, his 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 old job, and so we met there, whatever. And then um I don't know, we just kind of bonded like like right away, cause it's I didn't even know, I really didn't even know him. I really didn't know him. So I I had came to where he was working at, and then um I might have knew I might have knew him for like I don't know maybe a couple of weeks, uh-huh. and then he he had just moved. He had just moved to like like a like his own crib like right near the state right there where, where we worked, and then um I remember the day he moved in he's like yeah y'all live I moved down the block I was like oh that's cool man that's what's up he was like yo whenever you want to come over man I give you the keys man whenever you want to go in the house and just chill I give you the key I was like oh what shit fuck, it's like oh, no doubt yo I was like damn OG this, he this, OG yeah this kid is cool man so then. We just, we just, I said before, we just bonded on hip hop, man. We just bonded on, 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 on the hip hop. When I realized this dude, I was like, this dude is my man, yo. We was going to this concert, right? Oh, me and him I, was going I to thought you was about to tell the other story, but yo, go ahead. Nah. <laughs> now we got, I don't know what story you're talking about. We're going to keep that shit PG. Yeah, we're going to keep it very PG. Go ahead. <laughs> but, um, but we was, um, going to a concert, right? So, um, I was going to meet him. I was going to meet him. In the, either in the city, I think I meet him in the city. I'm gonna meet him in the city or whatever. So I'm on the I'm on the damn um the damn Van Wick Expressway. Uh-huh. And my little my little Ultima, the fucking um the what is it the alternator whatever you should the shit blew, bah, the shit blew on the damn Van Wick Expressway, yo. Wow. I'm like, oh my no the um damn whatever the shit was, man. The transmission, the transmission blew. Uh-huh. The transmission blew. At what part of the Van Wick? Because you know, I was, I was, I was on a ramp. I was on a ramp coming off of the Bell Parkway, going onto the Van Wick on a ramp, oh, going around. Okay, the shit, okay. the shit wouldn't move. Yo, it, it was a crazy night, yo. So I got to meet my man. I'm like, oh my god, and it's already like eight o'clock, and then I'm stuck on the thing. I had to call the tow truck, and then I called him up. I was like, yo, man. I was like, yo, I can't, I can't make it, man. I was like, you gotta just go without me, man. Just it was, it, I mean, it was freezing. It was freezing that night. It was like November. It was freezing. It might have been like 30 degrees outside. I was like, yo, just go ahead, man. I got to get a tow truck, tow back to my mom's house or whatever, man. He's like, nah, wh- where you at? He said, I'm, I'm on the Van Wick, man. So I'm going to come through. I was like, nah, man, just go ahead, man. He said, no, I'm coming. I'm coming right now. And then he came and he fucking stayed with me. That's and the fucking up, freezing yo. ass cold. I was like, all right, that's <laughs> it. Dude, and then we and then we still end up going to the shit. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, that's my that's, that's up, my man. Yeah. <laughs> so um, no, like wait, I said, we st- all right, I'm on my way. All right, <laughs> straight up, not even a doubt, and not even like a hesitation. I'm coming right now. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so then, um, yeah, that's basically how it all started, man. And then I'm saying, do I love? I, I just I, I love hip hop is where we basically had the had out. Our, our base and shit, and then it just spread from there, man. Yeah, so um, I remember because we lost contact for a good few mm. years, and then I remember, yeah, four years ago, you hit me on on the social. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. I saw the mix. I was like, oh, get a load of D. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, what you were called? Like, okay, okay. You know, I mean, it all gets to a point where you know you always got to be like, yo, man, this music somehow is something you're always gonna want to do. It's something yeah. some way shape or form it's in your heart so you're gonna want to do something involved with it now how did you come up with your idea of a podcast tell me because you said you was deep into the you was before everybody was on this podcast business you was already on it six seven years man like deep like a lot no it is longer than that because when i first got my damn first car with it so we talk on like Damn, we talking like oh six, oh seven, because it all like podcasts kind of started off. It it wasn't as clear as they are now. You can go to iTunes and all that. You had a it was like some blog talk radio. It was like well, even going even even before the podcast, this is like early type podcast, but like radio show. Mm-hmm. I, I always listen to radio shows, mm-hmm. like sports radio, and like they had like wrestling radio shows. I just always listen to which they, they that technically was the podcast. It just wasn't on the internet. That's right, but. 
all of that stuff. So just going back to all of that. And I just, oh, and I always had an idea to do a podcast. I just never, it was just never really like an easy thing to do. And I didn't know how to, you know, how to get people in and, and then it just all started coming together. You know what I'm saying? As far as the, the started with the website, I already had the website already going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I'm like, damn, I can, I, you know what I'm saying? I can do something else with that. And then, um, I said, me, Lou and Prez just talking. We just always, I'm throwing different ideas out there. And then, uh, I was like, I think, oh, I remember what happened, man. It was far as, um, we started up, we, we, we was trying to start one with, um, it was me, Lou Hall and two of his boys. Uh huh. So we we started that. We started doing that first. Oh. That was like uh, beginning of last year. Yeah. Okay. So we did a couple of like test episodes, and um, I don't know. It was just like a lot of com- not conflict between us, but like time, like time, like everybody couldn't come together at the same time and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. Um, you know, I kind of was like, I, I'm kind of a person. I like to just do my own shit, really. So I'm like, I want to do something with. But like my people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm gonna get Lou and I'm gonna get present. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I was like okay. my people and shit. I mean it is what it is. These people are cool with cool as hell. When you brought it to them, how did they first react when they when you first when you first they was, they was both with it. Yes, they was both with it. It was like we with it, we with it, we with it. So then we started coming up with all these different um this is, you seen uh you seen our list. We still have how many shows do we have that we haven't even done yet? How many topics we have we haven't even done yet, yo? Yeah, we uh, a month, months like, worth, months worth. <laughs> without a doubt, so many times we haven't even done yet, man. And then um, it just all it just literally it was like a month to month thing. I mean, I'm sorry, like a week to week thing, and it's all just just coming together, man. It's all and and. You know when I when I when the first time I saw that shit on iTunes, man, that's when that shit. I was like, yo, we motherfucking official, yo. I like this shit on iTunes because I put it on iTunes and Stitcher at the same time, and I'm like, yo, this is it, yo, this is it, yeah. this is it, Since man. Day one when I when I heard it, I was like, oh man. <laughs> this is unlike others because, of course, you know, everybody, it's just a podcast explosion on the mm-hmm. Internet, which I know mm-hmm. you're, you're very well aware of, of how course, it happened, you know. Um, it seems like, but that's that's a lane that people, you know, they're interested in. So I was listening. I was like, oh, man, these guys got it, yo. <laughs> these guys got it. It was interesting <laughs> to listen to. It's so funny because we, we're from the same borough. So, well. you know, <laughs> s- some episodes resonated highly. You know, mm. all episodes had the cop. I mean, the way y'all y'all come together, Reg is is like so straight up crazy to me because <laughs> he seems like that OG that he is. You know, no Prez, doubt, Prez, is, no Prez, doubt. Prez is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> then, then you know, you had yo Lou Hall had me dying, son. He literally <laughs> is that young whippersnapper. No doubt. <laughs> you know, and you and you definitely out there now like magic. You know what I'm saying? You 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 running the point. <laughs> Got to run the point, but um, I'm gonna say with you, with you and shit now. So we um, you know what I'm saying? We start. We have we we do have like the like the, the Facebook group. We have the Facebook like the private Facebook group. We not, I told them let's just start one. Just have just our close friends because you know we got our family on there. We can't have everybody in the shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't play that internet shit, man. Yeah. So I was like, just have our close friends, whatever. And so um, you know what I'm saying? So you know, hit you up or whatever. And then like from you. From episode one, that's how I knew you listened to the whole show because you was commenting on shit like in the middle. <laughs> you was commenting on shit at the end. I was like, damn, he listened to the whole shit. I was like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So then, like the next week, come you still kind. And then I, I, I gave you a shout out, I think, in like one of the episodes, like at the end, and you commented on it. And I said he listened to the whole show. I was like, damn, okay. I was like, so I was like, yo, I gotta get you on. You gotta get on as a guest, man. And you wasn't pressing. You was like, no doubt. He was like, yo, he was like, whenever, man, just let me know. You was mad, like, yo, whenever, you know. So I'm like, all right, all right, that's what's that's up. Be. He's down. And then you came on. I listened to the shit. I listened. I remember the, the episode you did. The first one you did was the TV one. Yeah. Cause you know, cause you, you know, the, you know the process. I got to do the whole editing process and all that shit. So I'm listening back to it. I'm like, yo. But I'll say it started off when, 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 when it was like me, Lou, and his two boys. I was like, nah. Cause personally, I really don't like more than. Uh, to me, three, three is a good number as far as people. Cause I listen, I just listen, listen to other couple of shows, and it was like five, six people, and it was a mess. It was, well, it was a mess. I, even podcasts right now, you hear, when yeah, you have three, four people. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. So I'm like, I don't. I said no more than three. It's good. We can have a guest, whatever. But when I heard you, 
on it. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, we sound good, <laughs> yo. Cause the funny part about it is cause me, pretty much me and all my close friends, we all kind of the same. We all act the same. We all have the same demeanor. We all just like lay back and just chill. So I knew, I know how you are, yo. I know you bring that extra, that extra energy and shit. So I was like, yo, I was like, yo, this dude sounds good with us, man. So then, um, that was it, man. That was like, nah, he got, he, he got to be down with this shit, man. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I mean, I, 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 hear, I, I see, you know, the, the way working with you guys is amazing. I mean, every week oh, we get together and just chop it up about what we, just, what we know, you know what I mean? And then on stuff that we don't know, stuff that we were interested in researching. So when we mm-hmm. come back, we love to, to spread the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? And, exactly. and then, and then, you know me, I'm very belligerent, you know what I'm saying? I talk, no I, I, I be talking some shit sometimes, you know, I speak from the heart, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, I suffer the consequences later. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> no it is what it is. I love. I, I love. I want to. Say no, I love, love it. I love it. I love it. No doubt. But I want to give a big shout out to like all the OG podcasts that I that that I have been listening to. It goes it's everywhere from wrestling to hip hop. Like the hip hop stuff is like Combat Jack Show. Um, Juan Epstein was definitely super super big for me. Um, this podcast called The Cipher. Um, yeah, I mean, Drink Champs is, you know, it's okay. It's cool. Drink Champs is cool. You know, it's cool. Because that's, that, that, that's particular because that's the biggest one right now. Right now, as we're speaking. Yeah. And the, the, the interviewing is like, they're, they're, not only are they friends, they're, they they have good friends talking. Right, 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 know, right. And right. it's like an interview, uh, style. See, you know? now that, that's what I didn't want to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we do have we do have an interview we, we interviewed Cobra from um the Five Footers but she, like I said she hit us up we wasn't even really thinking about doing interviews but um you know what I'm saying until we start this now the introspective this is what that this is gonna be but uh-huh. as far as the actual podcast we didn't really want to do interviews yeah you know what I'm saying we're gonna just it's a it's a podcast called um they, these dudes are my inspiration I don't give a shit it's they, it's called Laser Time mm-hmm. Laser Time it's is these dudes they do it's straight nostalgia so they do they talk about like classic cartoons movies music they do all of this shit but it's not my kind of entertainment it's not my kind of movies not my kind of it's not for our community <laughs> no it's not it's not which but they they do an excellent job they do an excellent job yeah. but when I listen to one of the episodes and they talk about new release albums right they like oh the new Bon John but not, not new but it was like oh Bon John Jovi album came out this week and Metallica album came out this week oh yeah Jay Z Reasonable Doubt came out and then also Aerosmith came out <laughs> what the what the <laughs> fuck how you brushing over a fucking Reasonable Doubt so I'm like I. Right. <laughs> like this is like <laughs> like this is just this is not for me man this is just not for me <laughs> they cool they do an excellent job but it's not for me man so that's basically my inspiration i want to get to i want to get to their level as far as podcasts go i don't really see as far as combat jack and them they because we do it's different it's completely different like i said they interview people yeah and the thing with the interviews they interview the same fucking people all right and they're going to run out of people soon. Yeah. It's just going to run out of people. It's then, then what they're going to talk about. You know what I'm saying? I want to have a more of a base and just just do different things. You know what I'm saying? That's why we do the cartoons and we do the TV and we do the movies and we do the music. Just a whole bunch of different shit, man. Yeah. We, we're going to keep on rocking on, Dale. We can go forever. I, I told you, man. We can go for like 10 years, man. There's so much material. We can have... We had a, we had a, you know what I'm saying, a, a TV episode. We had a TV episode. We can do one show on the Cosby Show. We, we was we talking about that. Sh- That's absolutely yeah. crazy. We could do one show on Illmatic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We could do one show on Wu Tang Forever. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? We can go forever and ever, man. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to be drawing them in because I, I just feel like I, I enjoyed listening to it when I was listening. <laughs> from, from episode from episode one, man, that how y'all flipped it. Worse MCs, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh man, that's a that's a, a funny ass topic, man. Because you know, you know when, 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 when niggas get together, you know, chilling, drinking, smoking, whatever, you know, yo, yeah, but Magoo was a dumb fucking fucking sounding motherfucker, yo. You know what I'm saying? 
watch this porno. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the- yeah, that's right. I said too short as well. I, yeah, I, I, I didn't understand that. <laughs> he's a dope MC. I mean, not a dope MC, but he's a he's definitely a legend. Though. He's a legend. He's, he's a legend. legend. You, he's not a dope you MC. Say too short. I say R.I.P. Guru. I met him twice. That's so great man, yeah. great man, yo. But I thought on some tracks, I was like, ah, maybe it's pre- maybe it's Primo that's making the sound. You serious? Yeah, oh, right. Shit. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that- you don't think Guru was dope? No, um, I, I think I think I I I, I want to say yeah that he was dope, but there was on some tracks that I was like, you know, he like when it gets to the second or third verse, it's like, wow, you okay. Know, well, it's it's it is what it is, man. I mean, you know what? I never even had a gangster album before. I never had a gangster album. Isn't that funny? I mean, isn't that funny? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it, it, and for different groups, for, for you know, I, some people would say like even Mob Deep. Like, uh, P of course is an elite MC himself. Okay. And even when you heard Havoc, I was digging mm-hmm. Havoc. No people, a lot of you know people was like, <laughs> like that's the second door. That's the producer. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Uh, right. Niggas just would be on Havoc. Like even when Locks first came out, and. Mm. People didn't like Sheik, but I was mm. digging Sheik. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's some MCs that, you know, I w- that other people feel like, yo, they let, you know, they're this or that. And I'd be like, eh, you know, <laughs> second or third verse, you know what I mean? Or, when, you know, or or some parts and they verse. And then, of course, there's some there's some MCs that's, you know, ridiculous. You can't, you can't, you can't. Of course, you can't, you can't. <laughs> you know, like, you know, it hurt me when I found out Biz Marquis didn't write his rhymes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't even know that. So yeah. the Brooklyn and Queens episode, as you're going, I, that, that was hilarious. That had me. <laughs> that shit was awesome. Oh my goodness! Big shout out to Bingo. Big shout out to Bingo, man. I I really keep forgetting to just to mention that all all of our like the music the back the music backdrops to, to the the intro the outro that's all Bingo. That's all his beats, man. Yo. You know what I'm saying? It's dope. All the musical beds we have on, like, the belligerent postscript, that's all Bingo's beats and shit, man. Dope. Big dope, Big dope. Up. Big shout out, man. Big shout out to my man Bingo and shit. I enjoy. He's another cool dude. <laughs> I enjoy him and him on that episode. I was like, yo, <laughs> y'all, y'all would talk about straight everything I know. Yo, the part when Bingo kept on saying, Brownsville, shout out to Brownsville. I, mean, <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did almost an eight-year stretch in, 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 in the Ville. So I was like, yeah, that's yeah. what's up, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know what he's talking what about. Is, yeah. You really was. You was. You was like. You was in Queens for mad long. Yeah, you was in Brooklyn for mad, mad long. long yeah, man. So, That's what's up, it's, man. Like, it's hard for me to um to pick sides. I was born in yeah. I did stretches in Brooklyn, raised no in Queens. <laughs> I guess they say wherever you went to high school, that's where you grew up. I don't yeah, know. I yeah, pretty much, sure. pretty much. And you August Martin, man. Never. August Martin, man. So I didn't even realize like how much I, I just love fucking Queens, man. Like when I moved out, of, I was just happy to because I I moved out of New York about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what I'm saying with the family, we in we in um Raleigh now, okay. which is a dope. Love it, love it in Raleigh, love it. It's a beautiful place, man. But um. And I was happy to get out of New York, yeah. you know, because uh, everything is just crazy. I was happy to get out of New York and shit. But um, it was always Queens, though, man. I was just thinking about it. I was like, yo, it's like Queens, kid. I'm proud to be from Queens, man. I love Queens. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Love Queens. Yo, Queens is so dope to me. It's like you can raise your, we had, you know what I'm saying, raise your family there. You know what I'm saying? They had like, we had backyards, front yards and shit. We played football on the street. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had an attic, a basement. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Queens, man. I had two TVs. <laughs> two TVs. Press, press to get me on that Hilarious, man. That's funny. But yeah, man, so it's all about the love of hip hop, man. No doubt. I was going to, no I wanted to go so, so deep, but you know, it's, it's so funny because it's just like the content is ridiculous. They're gonna, they listen, the listeners alone are going to hear and learn so much from us as we keep mm-hmm. on going. They're going to understand, yo, that. You know, it's just like when anything comes from the heart is genuine, is authentic. You know, just say we're just gonna keep on going, keep it, keep it going for the love, D. I appreciate you for getting us together, yo. No doubt. I appreciate y'all for coming, for, for just doing what y'all do, man. Like I said, I put the post up before, like, you know what I'm saying? I got the best crew, man. We the best crew. We are the fucking best crew, yo. I think we just, we just gotta get that. You know, it don't even matter. It don't even matter if we catch that break. It don't even matter because we having fun. I really enjoy getting up with y'all every week and shit, though. It's like, I, I look forward to it. You know what I'm saying? Every Tuesday we record. I look forward to it and shit. And we try to give as much content as possible, man. It's a spark for the brain. The research, the learning. Yeah. We're learning like, no even the same, at the same time. You know what I mean? 
Damn. And then even like with like Lou, like we kind of, I mean, we we didn't have a personal fallout, but he lived so far away, we didn't like we we would go like maybe like a year without you know without really talking, maybe like a year or whatever. Wow. And then um and then like doing this, I'm like, like every week and shit, you know what I'm saying? I talk to him every week, talk to Perez every week or whatever, and it's cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying man. it's dope, man. I, I appreciate it, man. So um I I I wanted to ask what was the um. Y- y'all got a special uh, ceremony, a, a, a tradition every year, and <laughs> and, it, and it's and it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, well, we do um um NBA All Star Weekend um and see now this started with like uh, me Lou and um his father, our uncles, cousins um you know I'm big. I can't even name. It's basically about twelve of us and shit. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? It's about twelve of us. So this upcoming All Star Weekend, this will be my tenth one. This will be my tenth NBA All Star Weekend. The 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 older fellas, this will be their twelfth because they did the New York one. They did the Toronto. Mm. I wasn't fucking with Toronto and New York. <laughs> but I wasn't fucking with either one of them. But um, yeah. So we do that, and then um, next year it was it was gonna be in Charlotte, which is here, which would have been super convenient. I could just drive there. But they moved it, you know, to New Orleans. So it's cool though. But we we hoping to have um you know, so we hoping to do something there, man. We so classic podcast, hoping we I mean we definitely gonna record while we're down there. Definitely gonna record something while we're down there. You know what I'm saying? Um a treat for the listeners. Some, of course, man. I'm thinking some out some in in the street. We're gonna we gonna do something while we're down there though. So yeah, that's what it is, man. I <laughs> did what it is. <laughs> Yo, it's been great talking to you, D man. I know exactly. we wish each other the best and, and success and all around, right? I mean, it's just that's it's go it. along for the ride, right? That's what it is, man. That's what I'm thank you too, my brother. Thanks for coming aboard, man. Thanks for joining the squad and I'm saying we're gonna just have fun, kid. Just have fun. It is what it is, yo. <laughs> no, doubt, no doubt, yo. I I I appreciate it, man. Yo, no to doubt. all the listeners, yo, this is part four of the introspective of the We So Classic podcast. Stay tuned, belligerent postscript. Oh man, it's a it's it's a beautiful thing. So yo, D, have a yeah. good night. I'll see you. I I I'll be talking and seeing you next week, brother. No doubt. <laughs> we gonna drop a new episode soon, man. <laughs> Every week. It's come it's they come so fast. They're like Ali Jazz, so man. Like, Put out like three in a week, yeah. That's how we do. Content, baby. <laughs> Content. <laughs> we ain't playing no games, yo. <laughs> yo, thanks a lot, D. No doubt. Peace, my brother. Peace. Yeah, man.